Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a, an experiment. I am painting this for my sister. It is a, let me make sure you can see it. It's basically a coaster holder. It's a ceramic coaster holder that um, she asked me to redo her coasters. So they were kind of a beige color and um, this is the holder that they come in. So this is one of the coasters. Make sure that you can see that. This is one of the coasters. And um, there's four of them and they come in this holder. I'm trying to make sure that you can see this because um, I broke our last tripod. So this is a different one. Anyway, so we have paint kind of mixed up from when I did these. I had, they haven't been resined yet, so they still need to be resined. But um, because of the odd shape, I figured it would be fun to do this over a canvas and then rescue some of the paint at the same time. So that's kind of my idea. Um, trying to make sure that you can see pretty well. Um, so forgive me if it's a little off center. And some of the paint we're using today is primary elements. So this is uh, Carmen. It's a beautiful color. And this matches a lot of the red she has in her house. Unfortunately, a lot of these colors blended and created sort of this like terracotta color. Um, but that still kind of works out because she has this in her kitchen area and she also has it outside. So it kind of pulls those two places together. So I saved all of this paint was runoff from the coasters, but because it has primary elements in it and the the particles kind of sink down, I had to stir it. So what was once kind of a swirly color is um, kind of mixed in now. So that's okay. We won't waste it. And then this is Firefly by Primary Elements. And I, I really wish some of this color had separated in the last, in the coasters. I did a ring pour in the coasters, but because we had to kind of go over the little ridge, the composition kind of turned into whatever. And as you can see, there was a lot of paint left in the middle. So it kind of sank a little bit into the crevices of the ceramic, but that's not really a big deal because when we resin it, all will be right with the world. Um, this is a little Van Dyke Brown by Amsterdam. It's a really pretty, like, kind of a chocolate color. Had to thin it out a little bit. This is, this is white, titanium white by Liquitex, but it has some interference gold in it. Not enough to make a difference, but I kind of wanted it to not be white, white. This is 24 karat gold by Deco Art. Beautiful gold. And then, if we run out of paint, when we get it on the canvas, this is just a 10 by 10 inch level one canvas. If we run out of paint, I have some other paint that I could thin down with pouring medium and make it work if needed. One thing to note, this already had kind of a bump on the side. Um, so if you see that and think, what is that? That's what it is. I'm going to put just a, just because this is so heavy, I'm just going to put that little lid underneath it so I can grab it on the bottom. Once we get this covered, we're going to have to just move it somewhere to dry. So I'm going to probably pour it in the same kind of tree ring pattern, even though that won't hold. And I, I was toying, toying with the idea of the best way to pour this. So I think I'm going to start with kind of a tree ring in the bottom and then just keep tilting it out and I can add more to the tree ring if I need to. So that's the plan. Um, I don't know how well it's gonna work. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of this overflow on the top because, or on the bottom of the cup because, excuse me, on the top of the colors because it'll be the first to tip off. So if we need to make the paint go further, then that'll work out. So I'll put my coffee away.
and we'll get pouring. I don't know if this is gonna be enough paint for this, but the coasters take about a medicine cup full, so about an ounce. This is about three ounces. But, I mean, the colors are gonna kinda go everywhere anyway, so we won't get too crazy. So, it has been a little bit since we've published a video since I broke our tripod trying to turn it one day. Thankfully, my husband got another one. It's amazing how you can be home more and still seem like you don't have as much time to do things. It's kind of bizarre. I hope everybody's been staying safe and staying busy. Um, well, I don't think anybody wanted to have this virus situation. I think it has certainly given people a lot more time with their families and loved ones and kind of forced people to slow down. And so I think in some ways that's a really good thing. So I'm gonna start with this. I feel like I'm way out of the frame. So I'm gonna start with the Firefly. That color is more beautiful than words can quite describe and you probably can't see it very well on camera. The bad thing is I'm almost out of this and I thought I had a whole lot of it. Um, do a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. I also don't have very much of that so we're going to be a little sparing here. I'm really only using this for a buffer. I don't want to use too much of that opaque white because I don't want it to create too much pink. Pink is not really our objective here. So it'd be really freaky if these turn out very different colors than the coasters or the container does. That would be kind of annoying if it happens like that. I'm going to put a little bit of this in here as a filler. Between this and the gold, I think. It's really pretty. I mean, it's not intended, but it's a really beautiful color. And I do a little bit more of that gold. Well, I want to save some of the gold. So I hope I'm in the frame. I'm so notoriously bad about not staying in frame. So sorry if I am not use some of this as a buffer. It's a really pretty color. I thought when I did a ring pour that that would help me kind of hold up the composition, which was the intent, because the colors can, I mixed it pretty thick so that it would kind of stay separated, but the thing with primary elements is they're sort of transparent, and so if you do too much dark color, it tends to kind of swallow the lighter colors, and so it's kind of one of the things we noticed. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, I'm not using too much of this white because I don't really trust it, but, and I don't want to put that on top of the white either, so. All right. I think we will do this a little bit too. No. I put this little lid under here as kind of a buffer, but I'm probably gonna have to hold it, so I don't, I don't really know how useful that's gonna be. I put this little cake cup here. I use these a lot as a stand. I also don't think I have enough paint in here. I may have way too much, but 
better too much than not enough, huh? So pretty. I absolutely love primary elements, and I'm kind of, I have recently got a whole bunch of them, and I'm trying to kind of get my own learning curve down. Um, because while you are essentially mixing pigments into paint, um, you know, it's, you still have to kind of learn the right consistency and that kind of stuff, and so that can be an adjustment. It's crazy how beautiful all of those colors mixed into that kind of a terracotta color. Okay. I'm going to scrape the rest of the red out in here. My sister gave me these to do in like December and I kept pondering like what kind of design I wanted. I wanted them to match her house. Um, but since these were also not plain Jane coasters, I didn't want to screw them up either. And so I think the fact that they were in that strange little container, I was thinking about how do I do this well without screwing up the container and making it look really crazy. So took me a little bit to process that. I'm just going to throw the rest of this brown in here. I'd rather just use the paint. It's going to go on the canvas anyway. I don't want it to be wasted. Oops, well that's pretty gross. Just right in the, oh, in the middle. Then just throw, throw it some more, you know? So that's our, our first effort right there, I guess. Then put some more of this color here. And maybe a little more gold. I'm gonna reserve the gold because if I have a place that needs to break up all that red, I'd rather use gold. So, all right. And I almost skipped the this thing altogether. So this should be interesting. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna start here, just kind of go into a ring. And unfortunately, I keep bumping the side and messing up the design. But as I mentioned, it's not gonna hold its composition. So I'm not super worried about that. Um, so that's pretty, right? So, This is so weird. And you kind of want it to go over the edge, not just completely off. You know what I mean? Like you don't necessarily want it to all go... see now we kind of need it to cover the sides and it's not yet doing that so you can see why this is a wee bit challenging and why I thought it might be fun to do a video with it because like you kind of want to get it over the edge but you also need it to go over the side So while the inside looks really cool, we really need it to run down the back. So what I'm going to do is help it along a little bit. So sometimes if you help it connect, it will be a little bit more flexible. So the downside is, I don't know how much of this we have left to get to come down here. I have a lot on my glove, so I'm gonna do this. The bottom of this is gonna look 
crazy. It's okay. So what I cannot quite decide is, um, I don't really know how to, there's not enough paint necessarily left on here to kind of come out and over. So we're gonna have to do one of two things. I'm either gonna have to mix more of it. <laughs> well, this is not a good idea. Or I'm gonna have to paint the inside and then paint the outside. I can't quite figure out the right answer for that. Sorry, I know this is not easy to see. There's really no easy way to do this. I think I'm gonna have to like dab it from here and then let it do what it wants. Because it's kind of doing what it wants anyway. But that's not what I had in mind, so be patient with me. So I'm gonna basically kind of mess up this design a little bit for the sake of trying to get this covered. And then, there is some composition that can come from here, just we would have to use copious amounts of paint to get it there. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that, which is why I thought this would be an interesting experiment to do on camera. You know, people pour over really strange things, um, which is what paint pouring is. It's always so intriguing, right? Because you can pour some really bizarre things over a canvas and see what happens. But there are times where you really want to pour something and it's kind of a difficult endeavor and this is one of those times. So, now, this doesn't look bad the way it is, but it is not exactly what I had in mind. Now, it's still nice, and it may be better to leave it like that versus doing too much extra stuff because it might be a nicer design than if I keep trying to force something to fit that doesn't fit. There's not very much paint left in here and a bunch of the red is at the bottom. But we also still have quite a bit of this, so... I'm gonna try to get this to move a little bit. Maybe not with the composition we had in mind, but we're being flexible. I do have some other red colors. Unfortunately, my hands are too dirty right now to put this down and mess with that. So, sorry if you can't see, it's kind of a weird thing to film. We're kind of turning this into a puddle. I'm gonna throw a little bit of this gold in there.
Now, my idea behind this is we might actually need to wreck this a little bit so that it's not all matchy-matchy in the center, so. And this might actually help us get some more composition. The difficult part is holding on to this guy while we so some parts just may not look like we want them to and that's kind of how we have to be okay. So you can see where we kind of got I kind of think this still works the way it is but let's see. I'm going to grab this right here because I can always fix that lip a little easier than I can fix anything else. I, this is probably going to have to be not the greatest endeavor because there's really no way for me to pour this without messing it up further. What I'm hoping is that what goes on over the edges go down because see what's happening here is not very cute so I don't know if I'm just gonna have to kind of go with what I had going on a second ago and let it do what it's gonna do I'm probably going to have to do that unfortunately so let's tip this over the edge grab our edges the best that we can. See, you probably can't even see some of this and how crazy it's looking right here. The good thing about this is it will continue to move and it should continue to form into something kind of cool. I'm gonna torch some bubbles. My torch is a disaster so please don't judge me too much. Now this has pouring medium in it, so you don't want to over torch because it will burn. I am going to pour out some of this extra paint and I'm going to kind of deliberately do it in places where there isn't any paint. Now I'm going to have to move this. You can't really see the side very well. I'll probably post um, the finished product on Instagram and Facebook if you don't currently follow us there. Um, please do and you'll see a lot of the dried finished things, finished resin projects. We do custom tumblers, and so that's another thing you'll see. The bad thing about holding this like this is I am smudging the bottom. So I think I'm gonna move it over here really quick and set it down, be right back. I think one of the things I might do when I resin it to offset where it just looks like it's dripping is to add some interference gold or something. So on that note, let's try to make something cool out of this. So there is a lot on here that looks just like the middle. So we, we need to add a little contrast. So I'm just going to empty out these cups. Um, I'm going to use some of this on the corners because a lot of times your corners are where you need the most help so that way it won't be wasted.
thankfully this is a level one canvas. We're not talking about a super expensive canvas. Um, it's better than wasting paint, right? You never know. So, could be something gorgeous. I love to do base pours on these 10 inch canvases because they're gonna come out really pretty in one way or another, so. There's still a little bit of brown left in here, so I'm just gonna throw it in where it might be okay. As you can see, we don't have a lot of paint left. Let me rinse my gloves. hard to come by these days so I try to reuse where I can. Not always very successfully but unfortunately sometimes it's just easier to paint without them. Even if that means getting paint all over me so that's probably what I'm about to do. So what I have here is I have a couple of primary elements that I already have mixed up. They just kind of need to be thinned out a little bit. So this is, um, ooh, this is, I dropped the coaster. There was one little spot on this coaster that needed a little paint right there. It had the little feet there and it, they were showing. So I'll put this over here. So I'm going to, I'm sorry for all the delays, it's kind of difficult to gauge how we're going to deal with those. Weird containers. So this is called Jasper Red by Primary Elements and it's a really dark color. It's beautiful though. And um, I had just a little bit left in the cup and I didn't want to waste it so I kind of grabbed cups that I already had mixed and I figured we would kind of rotate some of those colors into this painting for some contrast oh my gosh this batch of popsicle sticks I opened has cotton on it they're so weird. I don't know if you could see that or not. So Jasper Red. Now if we were just to put it just like that without any contrast, it would just look pretty similar to what we have on here. What I'm going to do though is use up some of these colors I have mixed up already. And we're just going to throw them around here and there. It's a beautiful color. All of these colors are gorgeous. Like Leslie does an amazing job. And then we have a little bit more brown in the lid. So why not, right? A little brown. I don't normally like to paint with brown, but Van Dyke Brown is a really pretty color. So the stuff in the lid is pretty thick so that was not as successful as I would like. Now this right here this 24 karat gold should create a little bit of a contrast for some of these colors which was exactly why I wanted to save some of it. I I don't want to put it too close to the edge because I don't want to tip it off. Because these are all very red and we kind of need something that's not so red. And this would be lovely to add into the mix. So 
and most likely I will resin this because of all of the primary elements they'll show a lot better and so the gold will really stand out even more after that so this way we don't waste anything all right I also really love this color and it um, doesn't always get very much of a debut, so we'll do that. Um, it still may not stand out amongst these darker colors, but we won't know till we try. And this color is so iridescent that it's um, it's not going to show a lot of colors. It's darker, but it is so pretty. I can't wait to use it in some blooms where that really concentrated color, the iridescent. It's like a beautiful, almost like caramel pearl. Uh, it's hard to describe, but it's it's beautiful. It's part of I think it's part of the bling it line. I could be wrong. Don't quote me but it's gorgeous and I'm hoping it should break up some of this stuff here in the middle I just don't want to tip it off because it's so pretty and I don't want to waste it um, now here's another one that's really red and pretty it's called hot cinnamon and it's also by primary elements so this will be pretty sparkly this paint I'm going to use the same popsicle stick it's very similar to that Carmen color, it's just a lot more, it has a little bit more of a gold background and it's a little bit deeper. So that should be good. I'm going to kind of deliberately break this up in the middle. And Maybe kind of come alongside this gold. I'm kind of afraid that, that what I poured in the middle is just going to get swallowed up by all that stuff that's already in there. But, but we're having fun, so that's that's the point. There's a piece of fuzz flying around my face. And we don't want it in the painting. Alright. I love how like blood red it is. It's so pretty. And just making a big giant mess over here. And around the edges sometimes I just like to scrape off the popsicle stick. Now, this color, I remember when I saw somebody paint with it, I had to have it. And now it's a little bit mustardy for me, but I'm kind of hoping that it will mix into be like a gold. So it's called Sunflower. And it is a really pretty color. But you see how our gold is getting swallowed up? So I'm kind of hoping it will add some balance, but it's very very like it stands out quite a bit so this has been mixed up for a while so sometimes when you mix them up and you leave them they settle and you have to kind of stir up again it's pretty thick still And this one, it's, I mean, it's almost like a gold. It's really pretty. It's just really thick. And it's very, like, yellow gold. Like, if you were to compare it to a 24 karat gold, it's not as soft. But it's still a beautiful color. It would look really pretty with, like, a deep purple or 
um, like a Prussian blue. I think I just scraped some gunk in there. So I was thinking that we would maybe follow a similar pattern of like this. It may be too much, it may be way too yellow, but we'll see. I don't know that I want to use everything that's in there. I think it just might be a bit much. Now this one is called Cranberry. I mixed this and it's very globby because it's been sitting in there for a while. It's kind of a purplish, um, purplish, almost like a magenta. You see how when they sit there for a while you gotta kind of mix them back up together so and unfortunately this one got very weird and unmixed so I'm gonna mix it pretty well before we pour it out on there so I thought this might kind of pull this yellow gold in there a little bit by bringing kind of a little bit of purple put a little pouring medium see if it binds that paint color together a little better. I don't even remember what I mixed this with. One day I opened all of the ones I got and I mixed them all a little bit and I might have just poured a little bit of random pouring medium in there that wasn't maybe the best to mix it. I, so who knows how it's mixed but I don't want to waste it. It's been sitting in this cup for several weeks so might as well use it. It's still a little thick. So this is kind of an abnormally long video, sorry. But that's kind of how experiments go. They're not necessarily brief. Okay. So I think that we will maybe do a little bit of that and a little bit of this. dog barking. Just adds a little bit of something different. Kind of breaks up the mostly red a little bit. Now we can add more if we want, but it's a pretty good start. And I, I feel like we have enough paint on here. I'm wondering if we shouldn't add some more contrast. I have this Prussian blue that I basically put a bunch of leftover paints in and it became like this really pretty purple because it, I don't remember which painting, but I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of cool. This is more of a cool purple though. I don't know that I want to Put that in there. I kind of thought about it for some contrast, but I think what I would rather do is throw some of this pixie dust color. So this pixie dust is, I actually think the pixie dust is part of the Bling It line of color art and it's like a beautiful pastel golden yellow. It's really, 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 really pretty. And I actually did a little tile when I was playing around with these with this color and that Carmen Red, Van Dyke Brown, and some magenta, and that looked kind of cool. So I think rather than adding that purple, we'll add some of this color. And we'll add some over here. 
here. And add some up here. Because this is another one of those colors that it's so beautiful that it tends to kind of fade in with the dark colors and then you don't really get to see it. So might as well use it as a filler. And maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit better. I know that right now this looks like a hot mess, but it probably will be really beautiful when it's done. So this is also sort of a cool color, so for those of you who are thinking, you can't do that. Okay, let's get ready to tilt it. It's going to probably go in and out of frame, so sorry in advance. It's starting to dry because it has gloss medium in it, so unfortunately I waited a little bit too long to tilt it. But let's see. Um, and I over torched some places which are kind of unfortunate. So let's see if I made it worse or better. Okay. Um, well, one thing about using a, a gloss medium is that it, if you torch it, you can't really torch it for long because you will basically cook the surface and So you just have to kind of hit it quick and pop the rest with a toothpick or something. The colors are really beautiful. Sometimes in an effort to not overstretch the edge, I will do something like this on the corners, which I don't even know if you can see, to get the paint to flow. And See right here, we have a humongous bubble. I'm gonna get it with a toothpick. And then, let's see. But you can see how beautiful the colors kind of start to flow together. I think I'd like to get this corner before we get too far. But I think I could also get the corner with some of the runoff. So we don't overstretch the canvas. Because right now, this paint is way thicker than it should be. So. We'll do this a little bit, see if we can't get this all the way to the corner without overstretching it. I'm going to give it a little bit of help here. I'm hoping that that will just come right off the corner. but. Be pushing it because I let this dry too much before I tilted it. But I like the way it's turning out, other than it being kind of thick. I'm going to do the same thing with the runoff on this corner. And right here, because again, like we just need it to connect to something. I usually 
and try to keep the back of the canvas clean, but that's not going to happen for this one. And these gloves are a little big, so it's kind of hard to touch up the edges without making a bigger mess. heard any background noise. My husband was taking a little break from his homework, so he was in here grabbing a snack real quick. And I have stuff all over the kitchen, so. Okay. I just need to try to get this corner without losing too much composition or muddying things a little too much. See, the paints were the right consistency when we started, but I kind of kept messing with it so much that we lost a lot of um, the fluid paint. So now we're kind of having to make it more fluid than it is. It had started to set a little bit, so. Now, just want to get this down to the corner here. The bad thing is, if you over tilt it at this point, it is going to have so much runoff on the side that you almost kind of want to just connect it here and let it do its thing. I like that sunflower color a lot better in the piece than I did just looking at it. I think it's really pretty now. One thing to note about primary elements is if you decide to varnish them instead of resining them, since they are water soluble, you'll usually need to use a spray varnish first and then a regular varnish. Otherwise, there is a chance that they will run and um, it's not usually what you'll really want. So I don't want to overstretch this because I feel like we're going to lose a lot of our composition in the middle if we keep stretching to get this one little corner so I can kind of live with the corner the way it is. Um, it's covered at least. It's not super muddy at this point. I would kind of like it to have a little more depth, but uh, I'm not sure how much more I want to stretch to get it. So I think it's honestly a really beautiful piece like I probably this is not necessarily what I envisioned um, but you know what it was a few minutes ago like this is way more beautiful than I thought it would stretch out to be if that makes sense so I think it's really pretty um, there are some bubbles so I'm gonna use this toothpick to pop them. Some of them will probably pop on their own. But like this right here, I think is where I over torched my bubbles a minute ago. And I think it's like actual like paint snot is what I call it. So I'm not gonna try too hard to fix it. I'm just gonna sure it's a little bit more level right there. I mean if I do end up resining versus spray varnishing or varnishing that would be easily fixed by that. And this corner while it kind of bothers me in some places I, I think it's all right. Um, I keep messing with it and making it worse but
just kind of want it to blend a little bit better right there, but I don't know that that's worth compromising the whole piece over. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed watching. Um, let me bring you down for a close up if possible. Oh, my phone is right above it, so I really don't want to get anything in it. Let me see what you can see. I really think it's beautiful. Um, let me see. I can take my gloves off really quick. I'm tempted to like tilt some of this back over here because I feel like we um, ah, sorry. So this is the top left hand corner. Really pretty. You can see the bubbles and I'm not going to worry too much about them right now. Sorry, you can hear my dog scratching. This is the bottom left hand corner. This is the bottom right hand corner. You can hear my dog. Please don't shake and get your hair over here. And then this is the top right hand corner. And then this is kind of a, sorry about the ring light. Let me turn that off. This is kind of the overall view without the studio light on. I think it's really beautiful. Um, I would say this corner is like my favorite in this area, but my least favorite right there. But I also think this will dry a little bit darker, and um, I think this is really cool. I, I think that sunflower color is a lot more beautiful with colors like this, um, so I'm pretty impressed by that. Some of these bubbles will probably pop over time, so I'm not too worried. And then again, we're probably going to resin the piece, so not abundantly worried if they don't. There are some places where my gloves being too big have some spots, so I'm just trying to grab those. That's the bad thing with not being able to buy gloves is like when we do get them, they're like extra large and works okay for my husband but doesn't work the greatest for me anyway thank you so much for watching my experiment please like and subscribe um, make sure you select that all notifications because then that way you get notified every time we upload a new video I will post the dried results on Facebook and Instagram so if you don't follow us please follow us I have our links in the description box below Again, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.